Hello, my name's Mrs. Whitehead and I'm going to talk you through the psychology course um, and give you some more information. So there are sort of three top myths that surround psychology. So psychology is a social science, psychology is easy, psychology is just common sense. Uh, let's deal with them in order. So psychology used to be a social science back in the early days, the 1900s, um, when psychology came about. But today it's now classified as a science um, and at some of the top universities it will be accepted along with chemistry, biology and physics. Uh, psychology is easy. Uh, well, all A-levels are difficult and psychology is no exception. What makes psychology difficult is its scientific nature and the mathematical content. Uh, so to study psychology, I, also, I always say to students, you need to like science and you need to have a basic understanding of maths. And I think why psychology is often thought of being easy is because we're surrounded by it in our everyday life through the media. And it's really interesting. Uh, psychology is just common sense. Well, there are some things that we'll study that you would have thought, I know that anyway. Why did we need to carry out research? But research is the fundamental basics of psychology. And a lot of what we study will not be common sense because um, people are complex and it's wide ranging and very broad. So we'll study things that you wouldn't even have considered, but will find incredibly interesting. So a little overview um, on the course for the next two years. Uh, so the topics are not listed in any particular order, but in year one, you can see that you study social influence, memory attachment, key approaches, biopsychology, psychopathology and research methods you'll note runs across the two years and that's because research methods is the fundamental basics in psychology and in the first year you should expect to carry out some of your own research where you get to apply your knowledge. Uh, in year two um, issues and debates gender eating behavior and forensic psychology so for example in issues and debates a couple of the debates we will look at our nature versus nurture. So uh, nature, you're the person that you are because you're born that way versus nurture, you're the person that you are because the environment has shaped you. So if we were to link that to criminal behavior, we could argue that criminals are born um, or criminals are made by society. And then one of the other debates is free will versus determinism, which a lot of students really enjoy because it's the idea that you have free choice for all of the decisions that you've made or determinism. Those choices are determined by um, determined for you and they might be determined for you by your genetic makeup or the environment that you live in. So therefore, you would have no say. So that's an overview of the two year course. So let's go on to look at the um, exams and what they will look like at the end. So there are three papers and each of those papers are two hours each. Uh, let's just have a quick talk, uh, talk through each of them. So paper one um, has four topics on it and on each of those topics you would spend 30 minutes. Um, and in three of those topics, there would be 16 mark essays and the rest of the paper would be made up of short answer exam questions, sort of similar to the other sciences that require sort of key terms and very specific knowledge. And that runs through, that structure runs through each paper. Uh, paper two, so we've got key approaches. So that's the different schools of thought in psychology. Uh, biopsychology, which is a relatively new area within the last sort of decade, and that looks at a lot of biology, so it's very scientific. And then we put psychology on that when we explain how it affects behavior. So like fight or flight, which you've probably heard of in a situation, you're going to stay and have a fight or flight, you're going to run away. 
So we can explain that using your biology um, and then we link the psychology onto that and research methods and research methods on paper two is 48 marks so it's a considerable amount of the marks. Research methods will come across all three papers. Um, as I said it's one of the fundamental basics in psychology and then paper three is issues and options so issues and debates is compulsory and in issues and debates you get to be synoptic so it's when you can bring all of your knowledge that you've learned in psychology and you can apply it to, to, to support or criticize the debates so you'll have lots of evidence where you can say nature people are the way they are because of their genetics and then you'll have evidence that will show people are the way they are because of the environment that they've grown up with and you'll have evidence that will show a combination of nature versus nurture so the interactionist approach and that's being synoptic and then you've got the other options that are covered there Um, and just some questions to consider. I mean, there's a lot of questions that you could ask yourself about human behavior and why people behave the way they do. Um, but these are just some that I have posed. Um, and the reason for posing these to you is for you to think about them yourself, to discuss them with um, your friends that are studying psychology or friends that aren't studying psychology, because everyone will have an opinion on this, and your family members. Um, and a lot of what we learn in psychology, you will take home and you'll talk about either with your family or with your friends. So why do we dream? Um, how can we motivate ourselves more effectively through reinforcement? Uh, how can we communicate more effectively? What is intelligence and why should we care? What does it mean to be self-actualized? And what is more important, nature or nurture? So some of these terms you might want to look up, like self-actualized, because you probably haven't heard from um, heard that term before. Uh, but you can Google it, and it will bring it up and tell you what it means. It's a term that's used across many, sector, uh, many sectors, um, in business, in, in education. Um, it's become quite a common term that's used in everyday language. Uh, well, I hope you from what I've talked to, uh, talked through, sorry, I hope you find the course interesting uh, and we look forward to studying with you in September.